Hey, Tiger fans, Ben Rosenbaum here for the Towson Sports Network, hoping everybody had a happy, happy new year, and we hope there's a lot of great to come here in 2021. And the new year brings the CAA play for Towson basketball. And as always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Diane Richardson. Coach, happy new year. Happy new year to you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. And, and happy CAA play. It's conference time. Um, and, and it seems like we just started playing some basketball. Now, you know, CAA play is already here. And uh, you're, you're diving in the deep end first for, for, for you guys. Uh, JMU, it's a, it's a clash of arguably two of the best teams, if not the two best teams in the conference. And you're getting kicked off right away uh, down in Harrisonburg. What is it like preparing for JMU every year? Because, I mean, everybody talks about them. They, they carry themselves as the big dog, their favorites every year. What, what is it like for you as a staff preparing for a JMU team? Well, you're right. It is a storied team, and they are at the top of the conference every single year, year in and year out. So we know that we've got to come and we've got to be prepared. And, you know, with COVID and everything, and things have not been the same. But I guarantee you, JMU will be the same. So we've got to prepare for them. And, and you know, they're a tough, tough team uh, full of athletes and, and, and ballers. But I think we have that same thing, too. So it's going to be a battle, but we've got to be prepared for them. And JMU, Harrisonburg, uh, brand new stadium down there for them. So, you know, they're, they're trying to break that thing in nicely. And uh, it does look like they are having some fans inside the building. Mm -hmm. And they, that place can get loud. It can get raucous, even, I'm sure, with not full capacity. Uh, you have a very new team. How do you mentally prepare them for playing against a Harrisonburg crowd and trying to block out the noise? Well, Again, it's got to go to focus, and it's got to be focused on the game. And we've got to focus on what we're doing and, and not worry about the stands, not worry about the, the new stadium, which is, which is gorgeous. I've seen it on video. But we've got to be focused on the game and, and what we've been working on this week to, uh, to be prepared for the game. Taking a look at the Dukes, uh, Kiki Jefferson, um, one of the top players in the conference, uh, she's able to kind of do it all for them. We saw flashes of her last year as a freshman. and. Uh, when you look at Jefferson's game, what stands out to you? What do you have to do to shut her down or neutralize her as best you can? Well, we've got to keep her in front of us, obviously. She's a, a good basketball player, knows the game well. Um, but we've got to keep her in front of us. And that's one of the things with our defensive assignments is not letting her get to the hole. Uh, they're also getting some nice production from uh, Peyton McDaniel and Jamila Harris, a freshman guard off the bench, uh, both averaging in double digits along with uh, Kiki Jefferson. And when you look down the roster, it's, it's almost very similar to, uh, similar to you guys where you have these handful of players where they're good and you know they're going to get their points and you know they're going to get their stats, but they have others that kind of lay in the weeds and they could break out at any point in time. When you have rosters like that, and it's not just JMU, it's, it's, it's across the conference, how do you prepare them for those kind of trap players, let's call it, where you, you got to be aware of it. You can't, you can't just say, okay, well, I don't have to worry so much about A because I just need to not let B go crazy. Right. Well, the thing about JMU is, you know, their entire roster, they play so hard for each other that, you know, a typical kid coming off the bench may be scoring two points and a big game may score 20. So we've got to be prepared for that because this is a, one of those types of games where – you know, obviously we're rivals. Um, and so every kid is going to get up for, for this game. And so we've got to be prepared for that and them for us as well. And then looking at your team, uh, in JMU, two losses coming into this game. You guys are a very disappointing loss against St. Francis recently. Both teams kind of pissed off looking for a win uh, and want to get it at the hands of their rival. And what's the mood been like in your locker room following that St. Francis when you talked about focus, how locked in is everybody and, and trying to right the ship following the St. Francis loss? Yeah, the St. Francis loss was obviously very disappointing, but what we've done is we've put that game behind us um, and now focusing. It, it's really important now that we're going into conference and then we're going against the number one team. So it's got to be, we had to put that behind so that we can concentrate on this upcoming game. So it's got a double, uh, you know, meaning for us, or maybe triple getting back from, you know, surviving that loss and then playing the number one team in our conference and it's conference play. Obviously we know about Mello. We know Mello's going to hopefully go down to Harrisonburg and do her thing. 
um, from a leadership perspective, and you talk about the focus and you talk about being locked in, Aaliyah Nelson, uh, that point guard position, arguably the most important on the floor. What are you looking from her from a non-stat standpoint to keep everybody focused and kind of progressing her leadership uh, on this team? Well, that's one of the things. Aaliyah is just a true leader, but she's so much of a team player that, you know, when you look at the stats, you don't see the mellow type performance, but the mellow type performance comes because Aaliyah Nelson leads the floor. And she's a very integral part of our team because she wants to make her teammates better and she wants to put them in a, a good position to play and to win. And so we, we, we value that, of course, in the point guard you know, position. She kind of thinks that she's moving into the shoes of Q Mary, and I like that attitude. And then, Coach, final question. Uh, obviously, with, with COVID and the scheduling being the way it is, not only is JMU your upcoming game, they're also your following game. Is there any sort of way you have to approach it differently or because you don't want to maybe tip a hand or you want to try to, you know, you want to pick up the two wins instead of splitting one and one? Does it add an extra wrinkle to the game plan and preparation when you know not only am I playing them now, I'm playing them in a couple of days? Right. Well, the thing about this new uh, way we're playing is, you know, we're playing the, the teams back to back. What that does is you've got to be prepared for not only that game, but the next game. But what it does is, you know, it kind of sets you up. You may go in doing something on the first game and then they make an adjustment and then it's totally different on the second game. So we've got to be prepared for every type of scenario because you don't have time to turn around and go through things. All right. The Tigers take on James Madison January 3rd at two o'clock in Harrisonburg. And then as we mentioned a couple days later, on January 5th at 2 o'clock in Towson. All those games available on Flow Sports. Coach, thanks for taking some time for us, and good luck in Harrisonburg, and then we'll see you real soon. Thanks so much, Ben. Take care.